And now this is problem four. Again, very similar to problem three, and in fact, the same problem, but a different way of solving it. Uh, previously, what we did was an algebraic solution. So we took the equation, and we algebraically rearranged it using MathCAD to create um, you know, the, the closed form, algebraic form of either R or H, whatever we were after. Uh, in this case now, what we're going to do is use a um, numerical technique. And it's actually sort of the MathCAD version of using the numerical goal seek in Excel. And I'll show you how it works. It's called a solve block. Solve block. And it uses two math keywords, given and find. And here's how it works. We need uh, the, uh, here's the two values that we know. And what we're after is R, the radius. We need to actually, oddly enough, provide an initial guess for the radius. So I'm going to actually put in just a piece of text, initial guess. And then over here, click R is, I don't know, one centimeter. So we're going to give it an initial guess to seed the process. OK? Uh, it's a strange thing to have to do. You know, we're trying to find R. So why would we say what we think R actually is? Uh, well, we don't know. Uh, but this is how numerical solutions work. You need to give it an initial guess for the process to start with. And then, here's what we do. We um, have our equation here, and it is an equation. It has a bold equal sign, not a colon equal. So it's this expression on the uh, left side is equal to the expression on the right side. Then, ahead of that equation, we type the math word given. Enter. It looks like text, sort of, but it's not. You see this is uh, Arial, and this is Times New Roman. This word is actually a piece of math. So what we're saying is, uh, given this equation, find, find what? Well, find R, and then evaluate it, equals. And it does. R is, well, I'll change it to centimeters. It's the same number we found before. I'm going to put these all in line, because they can be in line. So if it's a little short problem, I can arrange it like this. Or if you wanted to, you could arrange it like this. So given, and then the equation, and then find. They can either be in line, or they can be uh, one after the other like this. What this has actually done is uh, it's taken this value one centimeter and tried it. It said, OK, well, uh, I know what's on this side. It's A. What's on this side is 2 times par pi times, well, this 1 centimeter squared plus 2 times pi times 1 centimeter times 6 centimeters. It checks that and sees if they are equal. They're not, of course, though, so it tries a different value, and it actually just keeps trying and trying and trying different values of r until it closes in on the right one. Yeah, that's why you need to give it an initial guess, a place to start. So even though the result is the same, look, at no point in time did we actually isolate r. We never solved this equation for r. All we did was mathematically repeat trial and error to see if we can uh, find the right answer, and that was all we were able to do. Uh, it does end up with the, the same final answer. The only thing is r isn't defined. This finds r, but it doesn't define r as 4.9 centimeters. So we can modify this expression to make it a definition. Select that whole find r expression. Make it colon for the uh, variable definition operator, and then the variable. So uh, this expression is saying r is defined as the find of r, which is a strange way of putting it, but that's how it works. Uh, and again, it's final solution, so I'll highlight it. And uh, there's our answer. Now, th this initial guess, surprisingly, is not very sensitive in, in a lot of cases. Uh, we didn't know what the real radius is. We guessed one turns out to be five centimeters. But you can be way off in your guess. What if I guessed, I don't know, a hundred centimeters? That's way off. No problem. It doesn't change the answer. I can even guess R is, uh, I don't know, 50 kilometers. That's a pretty crazy guess. But still, it is a distance unit, and it's fine. So all of these work. But there is a problem. If I were to guess that R is equal to minus five centimeters. Look what happens. Oh, minus centimeters. Ah, now we have a problem. And that problem is that um, because we started with a negative value for r, and why would we? You could, but why would you? Uh, recall from the previous problem, 
This is a quadratic, and there are actually two solutions. There's two values of r that will make this equation true. There's the 5 centimeter one and the minus 11 centimeter one. The minus 11 centimeter one is meaningless, but it mathematically it does work. So essentially, you'll, you'll converge on the solution that's closest to your initial guess. So if you give it a negative answer, it finds the negative root. So that's probably not what you want to do. Generally, when you make an initial guess, the best thing to do is use some engineering judgment and guess about what do you think it's going to be. Uh, so we're dealing with a little, a little uh, six centimeter tall cylinder. You probably expect that the radius of it's going to be something in around the same magnitude. Uh, when in doubt, I just use the value one but make sure you give it units. R equals one won't work. R equals one centimeter, or meter, or mile, or foot. Any distance unit will be fine. Make that your initial guess, and then it converges on the right value. Okay. This is called a solve block. This uh, set of calculations here is the solve block. And it uses the keywords given and find. And in between, sandwiched in between those keywords, is an equation, a MathCat equation that has the control, uh, control bold uh, equal sign, the, the bold equal sign, to make it a real equation. And you have to give it an initial guess. For whatever variable you're trying to solve, you have to have a, an initial guess. You don't have to write the word initial guess, but it's not a bad idea to do it. And the other variables all have to be defined. Okay, we could also do this. We could have modified this problem and said, uh, you know what? Let's do this. Uh, let's say that if we know what R is, let's say R is uh, five centimeters, and what we want to do is find H. M move this around. Beg your pardon. So we know the area, we know the radius, and we're going to go after H. So we guess H is say one centimeter, and then define H as the find of H, and evaluate that. And there we go. It's uh, about six centimeters, as it turns out. Okay, so again, this is another way of, of solving an equation, but this has the beauty that you don't need to algebraically solve this. In some cases, um, these are very difficult to solve. This isn't a bad example. Solving H is very easy. Solving for R, a little trickier because it's a quadratic, but you know, if you had to use the quadratic formula, you could do it. If this was a cube, though, solving a cubic is very, very difficult, and uh, it's doable, but it's a very, very complex piece of algebra, and the solve block makes a little more sense. And in some cases, there are a certain class of equations in which you can't solve. In some cases, uh, the variable that you're after cannot be algebraically isolated. They, they do turn up, and then the only solution is this numerical result, this numerical solution using the so-called solve block. Okay, so we now got two methods for uh, solving an equation. There's the algebraic method, using the symbolic variable solve command, and then there's the solve block. The solve block is a numerical solution. The symbolic solution is a, an algebraic or a theoretical solution.